Hi everyone, it's Craig from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to take a look at one of the swords we've been making for a long time in a couple different variations over the years. It's our Anglo-Saxon sword. This is based on an original that was found in the Thames. When it was originally dug up, it came out in two pieces. It was near Wandsworth on the Thames River, and today it resides in the Museum of London collection. It's an elegant sword of the Type 10 variety. It has a broad blade, about 2.2 inches or so. Uh, it's got only 34 and a half inch long overall length. The blade length itself is about 29.2. So it's not a huge piece, but it's very effective. The cog actually comes down the blade quite a bit. It's about 5.8 inches or so and it just makes for a wonderful swinging sword. Because of the breadth of the blade and having a sharp edge on there, it's a fantastic cutter. Moves very well in the hand, uh, whether you want to try and do the hammer grip or the handshake grip. There's a big discussion about that, and we'll put a link into that on the description there. And you can understand why these swords were so effective in their time frame. Uh, this is the type of sword that it's main opposition as far as what kind of things it would be going up against would be other swords, axes, shields would be used with a shield most likely. The type of armor it would run into, possibly only rarely, would be mail or a helmet at best. So it is a sword designed for cutting, slicing, uh, using in an effective shield and sword kind of combat. Um, today we understand that type of combat so much better. Even a few decades ago, when we thought about the type of combat, Anglo-Saxon, Dane, Viking, Raiders, those kind of things, we had a very uh, poor idea of exactly how that probably worked out. Today, we have such a better idea of it. Um, literally, you can look at Kurt Douglas and the Vikings and how they fought and, you know, representing definitely a movie, but it's just um, a different idea about how that kind of combat would have occurred. Today we have incredible research groups like Hurstwick and Roland Wazinski working to really create and, and define how these types of pieces would have been used to their best ability and success in combat with another opponent. Uh, a sword like this would almost always be combined with a shield, which is a weapon in and of itself. And so this type of sh sword becomes something that's very dynamic can be used very intricately in combat itself and is not standing toe to toe and hacking at someone, uh, trying to just bludgeon them to death. It's, it's not about that at all. Um, the definition of how to use the sword itself has evolved and we have a much better understanding today than we ever have probably in really looking at the historical things we can tell about this type of sword and then how you as a practitioner could pick this sword up and use it whether for cutting practice or in HEMA or in reenactment all those kind of things create a better representation uh, our particular sword itself has a guard that's slightly canoe shaped a slight downturn the up lower portion of the pommel has a slight upturn that kind of mirrors the same arc we have a thin little leather covered grip on here and then the three lobed secondary pommel that's a separate piece and that's all peened together uh, as the original would have been. These types of swords would have been used uh, as I said you know very delicately in some cases or with a lot of force. You could take a limb off with one of these quite easily. It is not the type of thing that you would have to take care of to you know be worried about it or something but these are the, the swords of legend in the sagas. These are the very things that they talk about. So obviously uh, it was probably a very sad day when someone lost this at Wandsworth, uh, whether it fell in the river or out of a boat or was lost in combat, who knows. Uh, but a sword like this is, is an exceptional piece of history and our reproduction is, is very close to the original and we try to make it a piece that you would be very proud to have in your collection. So if you are interested in one of these, let us know and we'll make you one.